fifty percent of the pantries are totally volunteer run. Yeah. And you have these amazing, generous people who take on totally running the pantries with their volunteer support. And at some point, they want to retire from their volunteer job. So um, getting people in to do some succession planning to help them carry on um, the operations of the pantry is important. You hear it a lot. There's a lot of talk and a lot of mention in the media about people being hungry, people that, you know, even are have jobs and still can't, you know, make make, make three meals a day and, and nutritious. And we're going to talk about that a bit in depth today with Natasha Pernica. She is from the Food Pantries of the Capital District. Did I get that? What's the official title of your organization? It's the Food Pantries for the Capital District. How about that? I got it right. Isn't that <laughs> yeah. great? So how are you today, Natasha? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me here. You're from Albany, and you are in charge of the food pantries in the Albany district, which encompasses quite a lot of territory, right? I mean, how widespread is your reach? Yeah, so when we talk about the capital district, um, we serve four counties, mm -hmm. Albany, Rensselaer, Saratoga, and Schenectady. We're a coalition of almost 70 food pantries who provide food resources for more than 50,000 people every year. 50,000, wow. What is the difference between what you do and, uh, say, a local food bank? Obviously, a food bank is one location. Am I, is that my understanding of it? Yeah, a lot of people um, just understanding how do we all work together. So the Food Pantries for the Capital District, we're a unique organization in that we're a coalition or network of food pantries. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of food pantries in many communities, rural, suburban, and urban. A lot of food pantries are located in churches or other community buildings or nonprofits. So food pantries are where people go to if they need food assistance. The food bank is a large building, a large warehouse, and food banks, at least in our area, provide about 60 to 80 percent of the food mm -hmm. that is distributed through the food pantry system. And then our organization, you can kind of see a picture of one of our trucks. Mm -hmm. um, we help fill in the gaps uh, because really food pantries is largely a charitable endeavor. Mm -hmm. And so there's, we try to provide shared services and fill in the gaps. So one of the things, one of our programs is called Food Express, mm -hmm. where we actually picked up, pick up palletized orders from the food bank and drop them off at the individual pantries because about 50% of pantries are completely volunteer run. Right. And I don't know if anybody out there has a pickup truck or a minivan, but try putting 4,000 pounds of food uh, in your truck or minivan, not not the best idea. So, uh, one of our one of our shared services is the food distribution piece. Wow. Okay, that's pretty widespread. People, there might be a misconception out there. Hey, so you know, I'm on food stamps. Uh, you know, you're on food stamps. You got SNAP. Why do you need to go to a food pantry or a food bank or something like that? But there's a really distinct. Re there's a distinct reason for that, I'm, I'm sure, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to talk about SNAP. SNAP, or what used to be known as food stamps, typically lasts an average family or individual three out of the four weeks each year. Mm -hmm. So you get to the end of the month and people are running out of food resources. Right. But, I, but I also want to note that, you know, SNAP is... SNAP stands for Supp Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Oh, so it's not meant to cover the entire household's needs. Uh -huh. And the other thing, which was a really good thing, is this year the federal government increased the SNAP benefit 21%. Mm. It hadn't been updated in decades. So that was an important thing that happened federally. However, look at inflation and all of our budgets when we're going to the grocery store are being blown out of the water right oh, now. Yeah. So just keep in, keep in mind that even though SNAP increases just happened with the inflation and cost of food, um, there are we are seeing a lot of people coming back to the pantry system. And that's because of the rise in fuel prices to get the food to the stores, to the supermarkets and places where they... yeah and there's still a lot of supply chain issues still continuing from the pandemic so uh, I have a really good idea about this the answer I think you'll give but where 
does the food come from for your the food pantries? I mean, donations, volunteer. As an example, I uh, uh, I got involved in something at the College of St. Rose not too long ago where they had a pasta challenge down there, and there was pasta coming in from everywhere. <laughs> and that was about where yeah. where does um, – and I was covering it on, on, a, on, a, on a video. But where does everything come from? That's a really great question. I think when you say food pantry, the first thing people want to do is say, I'd love to donate food. I want to host a food drive. And so definitely it's from people in the community, from companies and organizations that have food drives. But we always make sure to let people know most of the food actually comes from the food bank. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the food that the pantries are ordering, some of it is USDA, mm -hmm. so like federal federal government USDA food, which is free. Yeah. And then there's also a co-op. Oh. So pantries are ordering specific items. I think, you know, my own grandparents used to use a food pantry. My grandpa was like a union carpenter back in the day and re he retired at a young age. And by the time my grandparents were in their 80s and 90s, they were living on a really, really limited budget. Right. And um, <clears throat> they utilized food pantry services. And back then, that was 20, 25 years ago. Right. Um, the the way pantries and food banks worked back then is like you would get what you get. So they would come home with this box of food and there was a lot of stuff in there that my grandma wouldn't use. Yeah. She's giving me these things. She's like, I don't know how to make this. I'm not going to eat this. And I was in college at the time. And so I was getting the stockpile of foods that we weren't going to eat. <laughs> And over time, um, pantries, at least in New York State, have really changed in that pantries provide food based on the My Plate model, which is like the new food pyramid. So pantries are required to give a variety of food, proteins, uh, grains, yeah. produce, dairy. And so while food drives are a nice supplement to getting, you know, especially items like uh, gluten-free or things that aren't typically at the food bank, mm -hmm. toiletries, personal care items. Yeah. Um, the food bank does kind of serve as a wholesaler in some cases wow. for the, the kinds of items that pantries need to have stocked on their shelves on a regular basis. And so besides food drives, fun drives are important because the pantry's dollar goes a lot farther uh, from the food bank then if you were going to go to the grocery store for a food drive and buy things the pantries can buy things um, their dollar will go a lot farther we also do some wholesaling um, purchase some wholesale produce um, and milk and egg certificates one of the challenges that pantries have is really limited refrigeration yeah. storage facilities so a lot of the pantries have like gift cards uh, for eggs or milk um, that people can take and redeem at the store. So those are some of the other things that we do as well. Wow. Some sound bites from Natasha. Look at that. Listen to that. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. And one of the, uh, probably one of the reasons that uh, people were talking about raising the minimum wage, and there's such a big thing on that where a lot of places are wanting to get $15 an hour and more and offering all that is to make is to have a livable wage to buy necessities like food so all of this kind of ties together this is amazing um, I think that's a good that's a really good point in that when we talk about living wage I don't um, a really important uh, report that I refer people to is United Way's Alice report. Mm -hmm. Alice, like the woman's name, stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed, but it really documents the working poor mm -hmm. because people who are visiting food pantries, yes, some people are on disability or retired or can't work, don't work, but there are many people who are working, working multiple jobs. Um, a, According to the Alice report, um, there's about there's more than 40 percent of our population in upstate New York that are either living in poverty or considered Alice, which is, again, they are working, but they're not making enough money to get their needs met. Forty percent of our population. So. 
Yeah. So that's where food pantry assistance helps, especially for people who are working and might make a little bit too much money to qualify oh, right for on SNAP that line. or other right federal on that line. assistance. Yeah, you make like two dollars too much, so no. Yeah. So food pantries are there because they're not income el based eligibility. It's based on your need. Mm -hmm. So if you maybe have a couple of months that things are really hard, you had unexpected expenses like medical bills or you had to fix your car. Yeah. A food pantry can help an individual or family bridge that hard time in their life. OK. Is there a qualification? Do you I mean do you screen people? I would think I, I I don't know. I guess I'd like to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, the things that uh, pantries ask questions about is, you know, where do you live? Because the pantries serve particular geographic areas. Yeah. Um, there's some coordination there. And then they want to know how many people are in your household because that helps them know how much food to give you. So if it's one person, you'll get a smaller pa grocery package than someone with a family of five people. Right. Um, and those are the basic, you know, the basic information. Some pantries, if they're associated with a nonprofit that can provide other services, will ask additional questions. But it really is based on you just expressing that you have a need. And at least the pantries in our coalition provide the pantry grocery package a minimum of once a month. So it's not something that you can utilize every week. It's meant to be, again, supplemental. Um, but it's a minimum of once a, a month you can go in for three to five days worth of groceries. Okay, that's that's logical. How did you, this sounds like a passion for you, how did you get involved with this and what was the motivation to, to get involved with, uh, you know, serving the public in this way? Sure, so I have been doing nonprofit work for over 20 years and it really, I just had this desire when I was younger I just wanted to help people mm -hmm. it was just a really basic thing is how can I help people and um, I looked at um, I looked at I thought I considered being a counselor mm -hmm. to help people but my first job out of college I taught English in Japan for a year wow, that, and wow. My heart goes out to teachers because you have to be on like all day talking and interacting. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I learned about myself is that I'm not an extrovert and it was really challenging for me to be on all day like that. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back to the States, um, I got a job at a really small mental health nonprofit and I got to do more of the behind the scenes um, program development and coordination work as well as fundraising. Right. And I felt it was still in mental health, so I thought, okay, I'm helping people. And I re that it was such a small nonprofit; it was just myself and the executive director that I got to have my hands in all sides of the business. Mm -hmm. And I really, really thrived and enjoyed the work and the diversity of my day. And fast forward, um, I moved to the Albany area to go to graduate school at the Rockefeller College for public administration focus in nonprofit mm -hmm. and um, stayed in the area and really the food pantries for the capital district really speaks to me in that we get to support the direct service workers who are just incredible people volunteers and employees and and we kind of get to do the behind the scenes work and the strategic things where we can look big picture and how do we fill the gaps and how do we all work together and convene and facilitate and um, I just I'm inspired by the people we work with and there's so much work to be done so um, we're coming I'm coming up on 11 years working at the food pantries this year and it's been incredible to see how we're able to grow our impact wow. uh, working together with everyone in our coalition. That's yeah. that's a long time. It must be yeah. in your heart. You wake up every day waiting to serve, I'm sure, or wanting to serve. I don't feel like I, you know, they say get a job you love and you don't have to work a day in your life. <laughs> like I, I feel so fortunate to be in that situation. Um, yeah, I love Mondays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sound like a person, but I, I love Mondays. I say that a lot. I say Monday's my favorite day yeah. of the week. It's like Monday, this yeah. sucks, pardon my language. But you know, everybody <laughs> loves, I, you know, and when Friday comes around, ah, oh, the weekend. Yeah, Friday's just like Monday. It's just uh, every day. I, I, I'm, 
I, I, I kind of do the same thing myself, so I, I can relate to that feeling. You have volunteers wanting to volunteer at the food pantries a lot. I mean, like every day, you probably get calls and people coming in and all that, right? Yeah. So for volunteer opportunities, um, one of the things we do is we will match people with food pantries in our coalition if, they, if they're wanting to volunteer. Um, some of the things, pantries really need regular volunteers, people who want to volunteer once a week or on a regular basis, because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time to train people. Sure. Um, sometimes there's one-off events, like a big you know, one-off thing or group events, but really the heart is the people, the dedicated people who come every week or every month mm -hmm. to come and help. So that's definitely, another thing is I mentioned that 50% of the pantries are totally volunteer run. Yeah. And you have these amazing, generous people who take on totally running the pantries with their volunteer support. And at some point they want to retire from their volunteer job. So um, getting people in to do some succession planning to help them carry on um, the operations of the pantry is important. And then there's things like fundraising and galas and you know board, board of directors and a lot of different kinds of volunteer opportunities for sure. All over the place. Wow, that's uh, interesting. You said that the food pantries of the Capital District serves how many? 50,000 people? Yeah, more than 50,000 people last year. Wow. And maybe I missed in the beginning, how far is your reach? I mean, it's the Capital District. How far north or south yeah, do you go? Yeah. yeah, we're Albany, Rensselaer, Saratoga, Schenectady. And we did just launch the New York State Community Food Assistance Network mm -hmm. with some of our partners uh, two years ago. So it's a, a newer organization where we're working across the state. We have about we have uh, representatives from other hunger-based organizations in about 13 regions okay. in the state. Okay. And so we are working on building that out um, so that we can all share best practices and innovations and learn from each other. Um, so, so that's exciting as oh well. Oh yeah, it sounds like. Uh, when, when you say train people to volunteer at a food, what is that? I mean, do you serve, I mean, put bags together? Uh, I mean, I'm just going from the layman viewpoint, but put bags together yeah. or, or do you actually serve meals, hot meals? Okay, so pantries are groceries. So it's like grocery bags. Right. Um, as opposed to like a soup kitchen or community meal, okay. which would be like the prepared meals. Sure. So f some food, food pantries do both services, but most in our coalition just do the pantry. So it's like groceries. So it would be anything from like driving around and picking up food from, um, say, there's a bakery down the road that donates their bagels. So some volunteers drive around and pick up like the bagels and take them to the pantry. Mm -hmm. Other volunteers might drive to the food bank and go through the produce right. and pick up fresh produce. Um, some volunteers like unload like our big box truck and when it drops off the food. So you have to have um, have a good back. Yes. And be able to lift oh. all things. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's. Uh, <laughs> and then other people are helping, you know, check people in. Yeah. Um, okay and help with data entry on the computer oh, or okay. fundraising. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things, um, but those are kind of, or sorting through food drives. If someone's doing a food drive, do not empty out your cabinet and give us really old food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dated? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that's expired. A PSA, yeah. PSA. Expired food. We don't. <laughs> you were talking about, I mean, you were talking about refrigeration a bit ago. I'll touch on that a bit, because I'm, I'm sure you have, you know, large meats, uh, you know, hamburg and chickens and steaks and whatever else, uh, you know, things that need to be kept cold and even things like milk and dairy, right? Uh, and uh, so there, each each one of the um, pantries or most of them anyway have refrigeration available, but there's always a need for more, I, I would think. Yeah, that's one of the challenges that a lot of pantries, they do have refrigerators and freezers, but it is a challenge to get more. Um, so one of the things we, you know, if someone is interested in getting involved, we do have a map on our website that shows m uh, thousands of food pantries across the state of New York. Okay. Um, so if you're looking to get involved with your local neighborhood or community, uh, if you go to the foodpantries.org, find food, find food here. We have a map oh. that you can click on. And it's always great to ask like your neighborhood or your 
town's pantry, what do you need? Mm -hmm. um, because every pantry is different and some pantries might need a new refrigerator or they might have plenty of peanut butter, but what they really need is deodorant and toothpaste and shampoo. Mm -hmm. So um, while we do our best to kind of get the whole gamut of items, um, always encourage people to touch base with their local pantry if they want to narrow it down to what is really going to help in this community. So food is most of what you, but you're talking about toiletries and things like that. So it's not, it's not 100% food. There's other household necessities that get involved with this as well, right? Yeah, yep. A lot of pantries carry other things, dish detergent, laundry soap, okay. diapers. And, um, diapers yeah, are expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And they're also not covered by any federal assistance programs. Okay. So you can't use your SNAP for those kinds of items. Mm -hmm. So it's really helpful for the pantries to have items. So a lot like of them that do well. that because it becomes. Uh, for the person, the family who actually needs the services, kind of almost like a one-stop shop, kind of, sort of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Natasha yeah. Pernica, I would like to have you on again sometime. We'll talk more. Uh, what do you have coming up? We're recording this on, uh, you know, in late March. But what's coming up? Any any drives? Any special events coming up in uh, spring summer that are coming? Yeah. Well, spring and summer. Uh, if you're having a food driver, want to want to get involved, that's a time when we ask people to do when they're focusing on food drives to really focus on things that are easy for kids to make for themselves and snacks mm -hmm. so um so think about that because when the kids are home from school they're not getting the school breakfast and lunch so you know thinking ahead helping the pantries stock their shelves um, for kids during the summer months is something we would put out there all right rock and roll get her done i want to ask you yeah. a couple this has been awesome and I love uh, how I love how passionate and articulate you are about this. It's really kind of nice to see that. Um, I want to ask you a couple of non-food related questions that uh, might get into your personality a little bit. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie. Hmm. What direction do I want to go with this one? Oh, yeah. I'm going to stump her now. Okay, so my all all time favorite movie from childhood. So it's the one that's been my favorite for the longest time. Is it's a animation called The Last Unicorn. Okay, I don't know that. So one. America did the music for it, and Mia Farrow is the voice of America. The, unicorn the, in it. the band from the seventies. Yeah. Horse with no name. <laughs> yeah, those guys. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I nice. loved that movie. I loved that movie growing up, and then now I get to share it with my kids. Oh, that's nice. And so that's like that. for me. Yeah. If you had a time machine, like this TARDIS here, the Doctor Who thing, or a Back to the Future car, DeLorean, you could go back in time and speak and visit with a mentor. You could do it once. Who might, and who's not with us anymore, who might that person be? Ah. Uh. I think a person that mentored me, but I think I didn't get to know all the things that I wanted to know about her is my grandma Pernica okay. on my dad's side. Oh. Um, growing up, she she was a she's a strong, stubborn woman, and she would always give me this advice that I look back on, and I'm like, what was she really trying to tell right. me? <laughs> And, um, and I'd like, I really wish that I could um, ask her some questions about her own life. Mm -hmm. I think when you're a younger person, you're pretty self, into self, like the world revolves around you. Oh, yeah, and yeah. when you get older and you start looking back and say, like my grandma, um, you know, grew up during the depression mm -hmm. and she wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. And they had a terrible car accident in the family where her older sister was killed mm. and her father was injured. And so my grandma had been planning to actually go to school to become a teacher. But after the accident, it, they didn't have any more money for that. And so I always um, but she always wanted me to have a career and be successful. And so, um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I could talk to my grandma. That is one of the best answers I've heard in a long time. Really good and in depth. 
and I love it. That's exactly why I asked the question, to get an answer like that. Natasha Pernica from the Food Pantries of the Capital District. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for your wisdom and your sound bites. Uh, everything, I like. To, I love that word for some reason, sound bite. But no, it was in depth, and uh, you, you, your passion is evident. And well, I like to have you on again sometime when uh, maybe later on in the summer, sometime. See how things are going down there. In the meantime, I, I would love to. Thank you. I like to do this from Star Trek: Live long and prosper. And right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.